Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm Chad Booth. Now, by now, you have probably heard some discussion about relocating the Utah State Prison in the Salt Lake Valley. Now, there are some pros to this because it would unlock all of that real estate out there, which could be developed. It's very valuable land. It could add to the tax base of the county. There are some cons to it, however, because you would have to rebuild it in a more remote location and staff it with people. That means a lot of relocation for a lot of employees. It would be quite disruptive. Not to mention the army of volunteers, almost 2,000 of them, that actually help rehabilitate prisoners convicted at the penitentiary. But there is another impact less discussed, and that is the county jails. You see, the counties have built, in many places, extra-large jails on an agreement to help the prison handle their overflow prisoners. What impact would this have on them? It would be catastrophic if they were to lose that prison base because of a new facility. We will talk about that later in the show. But right now, it's probably a good idea to see how this partnership between the state and the counties work when it comes to jailing state inmates. Here with that story is Dan Pope. When you mention jail time, often you think of the Utah State Prison at the point of the mountain. While it is the most recognizable and largest facility, there are actually over a dozen different detention facilities in the state, two maximum security prisons, and 29 county jails that house less threatening offenders. Jails are responsible for holding people who commit crimes within the county that aren't felonies. State prisoners who require a maximum security facility are housed at the state prisons, but the county jails can contract with the state corrections department to hold inmates that don't require a maximum security facility, freeing up space at the prison and providing an additional revenue source for the county. The citizens of this state can, can rest assured that uh, corrections is uh, being quite responsible. Regardless of where we're housing folks at this time, it's in a very secure sort of way and a humane way as we focus on treatment. I think there's an advantage for the counties to house state inmates because we can frankly do it for less cost. It costs about $80 a day to house a state inmate in the uh, state's facility and uh, they're currently paying us $45 a day which is big savings for the state and yet an economic benefit for the county. 21 to 25 million dollars a year is what we save the taxpayers. So there's many reasons why the, the jail contracting concept is, is working. We're taking inmates and contracting them out to counties and to rural areas. We have programming in these, some of these rural jails for rehabbing the inmates. The reason for programming is to fix you know, the underlying issues that offenders run into on an ongoing basis. So rather than seeing the same people cycle through the system and simply warehousing them, we're actually fixing and addressing those needs. These are people that have problems. They come from our state. They are our neighbors. And they're people that uh, are exactly that. They, they need some type of help so they're not going through the system throughout their whole entire life. The rehab programs are just one selling point in the contracting model. Cost is another. The Utah State Prison in Draper on the south end of the Salt Lake Valley is a mammoth structure housing 4,500 inmates, almost 1,000 guards, plus other staff. For over 60 years, it has been the destination for hardened criminals in Utah. County jails are much smaller by comparison and generally far newer. Building a small jail is easier and cheaper than a prison, so jails are updated more regularly with new technologies that save taxpayers money. The state recently began an information gathering process to look into the viability of relocating the Draper prison. A new prison may decrease or eliminate the need for jail contracting with counties. This could pose a real problem for counties that rely on the contract revenue and have updated their jails specifically to take state prisoners. Kane County, for example, wouldn't be able to afford to pay for the construction or operation of their $15 million jail that was built in anticipation of gaining contracts from corrections to house state prisoners. Kane County did get special legislation passed through the House and Senate guaranteeing that the state would use the facility to house some of their inmates. 
but not all of the counties will be so lucky. Oh, it would have a huge uh, impact on us. Jobs are paramount in Garfield County. It's a huge impact to us to lose any jobs. We are contracted through the state for 92 inmates. Prior to last year, we had been running at 72 for about two and a half years. Because that's 900,000 we are short on revenue for this facility. It, it does make a big difference. Even one job makes a difference because you've got a spouse, you've got children that are in the school system, and uh, I understand that's, uh, that's a big consideration, and, and, and I think that also bodes well for the, the 20 counties that we contract with. We, we have made a decision consciously in this state, policy-wise, we want to be able to spread some of this out uh, to the rural areas. So how would a relocation of the prison at Draper affect contracting with the counties? We'll find out more in the roundtable discussion. For the county seat, I'm Dan Pope. Chad? Thank you, Dan, for that report. It was very informative. When we come back, we will begin our discussion about the nuances of a prison relocation, the impacts it might have on the counties. Stay here on the county seat. We'll be back after this commercial break. Ever wanted to go on a vacation to Mars? What about a visit to the Old West? Impossible, right? Well, forget what you think is real. In southern Utah's Kane County, other worlds are just an ATV ride away. The Old West lives on in every sunset. From the downtown streets of Little Hollywood to the vistas that have inspired the world. Never find yourself closer to home and yet farther than you've ever been. Southern Utah's Kane County, where anywhere is possible. There aren't a lot of places in this world where you can feel truly free and wild, where the horizon invites you to set off on adventure. In Tooele County, you'll find just that. Explore the Benson Grist Mill and step back in time. Find yourself on a trek through our canyons. <laughs> Tooele County, experience endless horizons. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres in Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. unlimited opportunity for adventure. It's all about knowing where to look. ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and wildlife events. The opportunities are limitless. Pick your adventure in Miller County. 